guys, welcome to the channel. We're back with the E55. So if you remember in the last couple E55 videos, we went to FL2K. We literally broke on the first qualifier. We ran a pretty good pass for basically no boost, like after like one way, like one third down the track. So as you saw in the video, the problem was I lost all boost because my pulley kind of separated on the crank and then the belt basically came off and kept going up and down, up and down with boost because it was on like one thread or one rib, whatever. So the plan was I could either have got a factory crank pulley, which are basically, I don't know, 500 to to 1000 dollars And I might have the same problem again eventually down the line just because they have rubber, or I upgrade. The other reason I decided to upgrade is because also I found out that you can't even run a factory crank pulley under 10.99. It's against a lot of rules. You have to have an SFI certified pulley. I didn't know that. This car definitely should be qualified and capable of running under that time. Especially if you guys saw what time I actually ran when I lost boost a third way down the track. So if I can do that, I'm basically boost the third way and then motor the rest. I should be able to do it with a little bit more boost or even the same boost. So what we got in these two boxes is a way to fix my problem, prevent it from ever happening again, making sure I'm SFI certified and to give a little bit more power. And it's a good platform in case I want to add more power down the road, which I might and I still can safely. So what we got here is two things. First, Right here, the big one. We got in this box right here, a pin kit with new bolts, new hardware, keyway, and a couple stickers, and then the big boy. Great packaging, by the way, right here. A new crank pulley. And the benefit of this design of crank pulley, if you could see, you could add new rings. So, now in the ring part. What do we got in this bag? A brand new ring. This is a 168 millimeter ring that attaches directly to this pulley. The huge benefit of this is if I ever want to go up and boost, it's just six Allen bolts, and I can go up and boost. Here's a little better look of the parts I got. So here's the actual crank pulley. Ooh, ooh, wow. So all built. So you got no more of that rubber or anything that could break off. It is, as you see, SFI certified. So you're good there. And then you have the ring. I got the 168 millimeter ring. Uh, these are made by VRP. I did not get it from VRP because at the time they said they didn't have it in stock. That is what it is. So I'll put the links to everywhere where I got my stuff. And it was super fast shipping. Great guy I work with. He's on the forums. I'll put his name and all that stuff down below. But pretty, pretty nice. And then so what came with the pulley was this comes with the pulley with the crank and all that stuff, and then you pick what ring you want. I went with just the 168 because I was the smallest, but it's still more than factory, so I'll get a couple more PSI out of this, and I don't need to run another pulley or a separate, I think it's like a separate or different pulley for the water pump. Um, it comes with directions, comes with stickers, but I've done one of these, like, well, not this style, but I've done crank pulleys, I don't know, it was like 15 years ago, so I should be able to mutter through it. If not, I do have directions it comes with, it gives you the link and all that stuff. But you can also just watch my video for directions. Here is one thing that I remember I needed hardcore back in the day. So unless there's a different way to do it, this is a Mercedes crank pulley tool holder. This is supposed to be so you could just put it right between the crank pulley of the factory one and whiz it off. Clearly it will not work for this one, but for removing my factory one, this should help out a lot. But we'll see if I still even need it because remember my pulley is pretty effed up right now. So we'll see what happens. All right, this job hopefully is not going to be too bad to start. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be removing, because if you look right now, you don't got that much room for activities. So we're going to be removing this part of the uh, front end of it, get this fan out of here, remove a lot of the coolant lines. Most likely going to remove the radiator, but we'll see as we go. Remove the belt, so on and so forth, and we'll see how much damage. I don't know if you could actually see down there. Let me try to get a focus. Nah, you'll see, you can't see it, but in a human form, I can see it pretty good. We'll show you how bad that pulley is once I rip it out. So to get this piece off, it's just a series of tens, bam, 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 and then that'll come right off on my setup. I put it to the side, and now we're going to start getting the fan. Yes, I do have a huge chunk missing on my fan. This probably is hurting my cooling, but it still kind of works, and I just don't really got the time or money to go buy a new one. So it is what it is. And then next, to get the fan out, you pop these clips, and then if you could see right here, you get the electrical harness. You just pull it right out with these two tabs here, and just keep swinging out of the way. All right, now that we got the fan out of the way, that top part, the belts are removed, 
I did break the hoses out of the way. That way that fan slides right up. Now you could see really good of how bad my pulley is right now. I should not be able to fit a finger in there. This should be basically perfect. And it's not even broken all the way around. Like back here, I can't get my finger in, but I could right there. So we're going to hope this will come off pretty easily with that little tool. And we're going to keep going. So I'm going to try to show you how to use this tool to the best of my abilities with like the angles that we're at. So, all right, let me explain a little bit. So, these teeth go into the factory pulley grooves, so it'll slide around on as a huge hole, so you can get your ratchet and socket right through. The socket for my factory one is a 27. So we're gonna go set this up, and I'm probably gonna need a bigger breaker barber than that, and start breaking this loose. And this is how it's supposed to look like for the setup. Now, yours might go in a little bit more, but my pulley's a little separated, but this should work, so now I'm gonna go Probably with a few breaker bars, make it extend out, twist this, and if you really need to, if you're not strong enough, you could lay this bar up against the ground and then use that for your leverage, but I'm gonna try to do it without it, and we'll see what happens. So with a series of these pipes, we're gonna try this by hand. Do, if you don't think you're strong enough, do not do it, but I'm pretty good. <clears throat> All right, we got that off. Now we're just gonna keep pulling that belt up, bolt out, take all these pipes off, and then start pulling this out. Hopefully this pulley comes off kinda of easily. All right, so here's the factory bolt. It is a torque to yield bolt. So it's gonna be a one-time use bolt. So we will be getting rid of it after this, or maybe I'll throw it under my toolbox, but the kit does come with a new bolt. So we're gonna keep going. Okay, so now you're at the point to get the pulley out. So some people were able to wiggle them out. I need to get like a little uh, puller. So as you see, this is a six inch puller. I might want to remove the radiator later, but it still clears. So I originally, as you can see, my front one is gone. I originally set a smaller pulley up on the front one and it ripped it right out. So now I got the six inch and I got it in the back of the pulley and we're just gonna take my wrench and keep going. But as you see, it ripped it right off. And this one was just so destroyed on the inside. I didn't even put that much pressure. It was like one or two turns and it just went. I was like, no. But you can definitely see a difference between the factory and the aftermarket. We'll measure it all up and look it all up later. But let's keep getting this pulley off. So I did remove the radiator because it was just way too tight for me. So the radiator was pretty easy to remove. But now look, I got all this room for activities. So I got my six inch puller set up, as you can see. And literally it's how easy... It really should kind of be. I'll show you how I modified my puller too to make it easier for me, but let's see if we can see you. Just keep going. Just go slowly with it. If you hear a pop or grinding, just double check everything. But let me try to look to see if I can see it moving. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100% the pulley's moving out there. I don't know if you could actually tell, but I'm going to keep going. All right, so... I'm now going to, it is moving, so I'm going to go reposition everything. I think I got a couple more turns before I have to reposition again. Because you can see, like, I'm running out of threads. But just go slow and steady, and it's coming pretty easily. And just be careful with this. Try not to really use heat, because you don't want to damage the seal behind there. All right, let me reposition it and keep going. So, pulleys in, ran into a few issues already. So, as you see, my water pump uh, pulley is gone, because... You can't get the belt on with the factory water pump pulley. And if you notice, my tensioner is put all the way up in service position with the little, like, if you could actually see the little pin right there, is because with the tensioner all the way down, it was actually hitting the, like, a little little corner of it. It was rubbing against it. So I had to put that in service position now. Here's the big issue I got right now. So factory water pump pulley is 121 mils. And even though the crank part fits, the ring will not fit on with it. So I was informed I was okay from multiple people with going to 168, but apparently that's not right. So just always get the water pump pulley. All right, before we go too far, so I'm going to tell you, there's a huge weight difference from this factory one to this uh, built aluminum ones. But here's my ring that actually ripped apart in pieces. And you can see how much bigger even the 168 is. This should this is a 150 millimeters factory. And then this one is supposedly 168. I mean, I believe them. It literally says it on there. So that is an 18 millimeter difference in overall diameter and about 9 millimeter from side to side. 
So this should be pretty, pretty good. And you're going to drop some LBs on rotational weight. And you'll make it so, in theory, it should never snap like this one ever again. Next, what we're going to do is get ready to start drilling. So this is like the little guide piece. And the thing to assist you, the kit comes with everything. So you're going to put this in with the keyway. And then get the drill bit that they give you and just start drilling into your crank. Just make sure you don't go too deep. Measure your actual pin and measure your bit. And just do one at a time. Go slow. And that's how you're going to pin it out. So, side note. The tool I'm using to do the pinning is a just a cobalt angle drill. It fits in there nicely. And then just use your little guide thing. And just go really slow with a lot of oil. Keep checking, keep checking. I put tape on my bit. That way I know kind of when to stop. And if you're ever concerned that you're not hitting the crank and you're hitting like the aluminum of this, just get a magnet. I think I got one around here. Yeah, just put a magnet, see if your metal shavings stick to it. And then you'll know if you got aluminum metal shavings or steel from the crank. But I'm going to keep going and get this thing pinned. So if it'll focus, I can't even see what angle I'm shooting, but we got one pin in and we're just going to keep repeating the process to only do two pins. But it's not that bad with the setup I got. So the right angle drill with some brake clean, a vacuum, and then just every once in a while, let's give it a little tap with this to make sure that you didn't like have debris in there and that you keep popping it as just a normal punch. So if you can see the other damage we did with all that shaking is it looks like we broke one of the water pump pulley bolts and it snapped the head off. So I'm going to drill it out really quick and put a new one in and clean this up or wait for a new pulley. So just in case I didn't already show you, so this is the 168 and as you can see you can't get the factory pulley on it hits that ring but what we got over here is bam the brand new smaller pulley from vrp pretty nice so just show you a quick difference of the two first of all this is made out of aluminum it is a lot lighter than this not that big deal for me but the big thing is the the size so this one should be basically like a 115, 113, and this one's basically a 121 for my measurements. So it should give me enough room to be able to slip everything on. So we're going to try it really quick. So I don't know if you can see right there, there's a night and day difference. Like you have so much more clearance right there with basically the, the ring will clear, the pulley will clear. Everything is so much better with this setup. So I'm definitely glad that I was able to go with that. So we got the belt and everything on. Just make sure you guys torque your bolts on final install. But it's looking pretty, pretty good so far. Everything seems to line up good. We still have plenty of tension and all this stuff. So I should be pretty good to keep throwing everything on. I might do a quick little fire up just to make sure I don't got anything crazy going on. All right, we got everything back on. We got the radiator. We got all that stuff back in there. It kind of does suck. You can't even see the cool shiny pulley down there. But it does fit in there good. The belt's on. Everything's good. So... Uh, one thing I did mess up on, which is 100% my fault, <laughs> I left some lights on in the car, so now the battery's dead. So I got the car in the trickle charger, so we're going to get ready to load up a tune and give it the first fire up. I'm most likely going to give it the first little fire up a little bit, because it should still be fine as long as I'm doing full throttle, just to kind of charge the battery up, because I don't want to do the tune with like the battery dying. So we're going to try to do the first fire up in the car, and then I'll run over there to make sure everything's good. Uh, I'm a trash. Seems good. I still got to bleed out the coolant. So I'm going to let the car run for a little bit. Make sure we got no like crazy leaks. And then I'll start letting it charge up and do the tune. All right. So we're in the E55. We're going to start doing the tune right now. So pretty straightforward. Go to just open file for me. VTech already sent me this stuff. Just got to double check. Make sure I grab the right one. Should be that one. Verify at yeah, E55, 77, 168, 92, 550. Headers, decap, so on and so forth. All right, now I got to go to go over here. I already got the fan unplugged. And download file. Should be all good. Anyone ever did this, it doesn't take too long to do. Uh, just make sure you got your fan unplugged and a trickle charger on. So that's what I got right now. I really should have like all my other stuff shut off, but I 
should be fine with the trickle charger. It should be good. So we'll just let this sit, and then we'll all fire it up. All right, got everything ready, so we're going to go now fire it up. Seems pretty good. I'm going to put the laptop and everything away. Go, oh, I got to plug that fan back in, and I'm going to go for a little test run, maybe. All right, we're just doing a little drive here in Mexico just to do a little testing. I've been driving around like normal for a little bit. So we definitely got some pretty high temps. I've been stopping going, not really floored it yet. We're gonna try to do a pull here if we could. Try to do like a little 20 pull, nothing too crazy. And I'm just gonna try to wash my AFRs and everything. So I'll try to, I don't even think, I can't see it on camera, but I can see it in human form. Whoa, all right, all right, I gotta slow down. <laughs> So we did like one pull with it just to do a little bit of shakedown. Now I'm gonna look over the car really good. Make sure no belts flew off, no nothing crazy like that. Everything looks to be okay. There's not, I don't know if I see a wobble or not. Someone tell me in the camera if they could tell. But it seems to be okay. I'm gonna check the coolant, make sure it's still bled and all that stuff. But happy so far. So we tried like four or five pulls. Um, it definitely has got a little bit hot because I would just like cruise around stopping and going just to test some stuff But the pulley's not like ripping or falling off. I don't see no damage nowhere. No nothing like like if I got Any type of like slipping or walking the pulley didn't look like it was shaking like the brand new crank one So it should be fine. I didn't feel anything weird or any weird noises. Well, I did get one thing weird The only weird thing I really got off the car was the ESP was uh, inactive like it wouldn't let me push the button but I think it's just because I killed the battery and I probably just got to go clear the code it really should have nothing to do with what I did to the car and unless it has something crazy to do with the new tire set because if you know right now I'm running on um, a 275 drag radials and from that clip that I showed you now I spin in 20s again so the tires are set up pretty high pressure so I probably would have to adjust uh, maybe adjust my suspension a little bit but just from that like one to two pulls the car definitely felt a lot better with that little bit extra boost. So I'm super happy with it. I'm super happy with like the design of the pulley. The water pump pulley was a great idea from VRP. I'll put a link to where you can get a lot of the parts and all that stuff and who I bought it from down below. As long as I remember, I'm going to try to find a link to that crank pulley puller or crank pulley holder tool. See if I can find a link to that because I bought mine like 10, 15 years ago. But I hope you guys liked the video. Um, the next one, I should be taking this one out and doing a lot of data logging, see which boost I'm getting now, see what your air intake temps are now, see if I really have any other issues, if I have to address anything else new with opening, with opening the boost on this. But I should be good. I'm wearing very modest, like I'm, I'm stacked, but on 168 and a 77. I know people who are doing 77 and like 195 or 77 and 185, so I'm like at the, like the safe end of it in my opinion. And I got pretty good cooling, so we'll see how it goes, see what happens in the next video. I'll test it with ice, test with a couple other things, and work on my tire pressure in the next video to try to get more traction. But right now, super happy. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, that like button. And if you guys want to help me out, and if you don't want to like buy any of my shirts or buy anything like that, just watch the ads. I get money from there. Perfectly fine on that, and I'll catch you guys next time.